Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Rich pickings for traders beyond the single European market Is the UK referendum on EU a political blag by Cameron? Tony Blair has suddenly materialised, but is he really a wise man from the West? Bulgarian tobacco growers signal desire for EU funding support. Plus, our totalitarian legislators make another clandestine attempt to seize control of the financial markets. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, do you find yourself scratching your head over what this single market idea is? When you buy rice, where does that come from? When you buy sugar, where does that come from? Where do US aircraft manufacturers buy Rolls-Royce engines from? All of these trades are outside of the EU. Only three weeks ago I reported on the unregulated free trading of four African nations and the EU, and yet we are told in the next breath that we wouldn't want to leave the single market. This doesn't add up. This article considers the sacred cow of the sea, or SEA, the single European market. It makes really interesting reading and puts a lot more facts on the table, which is more than can be said for the prestaganda machine in the mainstream media. Are we being hoodwinked over this UK-EU referendum? Here's a thought for you. When you have a leader running for office before an election, they usually keep their powder dry up until the final days of their election pledges. Why then has David Cameron made a pledge of a referendum on Europe to take place after the next election, in around five years time? Already petitioned, if you remember, into debating a referendum only last year, and at the time he went to an enormous risky lengths to whip his party and parliament into order to refuse you, me and the rest of the British population a voice on this question. Is this really an example of democracy at work? We've got this cracking article on our site today which looks at the strategic manoeuvring going on within the chambers of power in Westminster. The deal is this. You're highly unlikely to get a real choice on this because independent nations with the power of self-determination are simply not on the broader agenda of the EU. The Commission has the hammer down. They are working in front and behind the scenes to bring about a single superstate under close control. The same thing is happening in the US as their Senate and Congress are being undermined, executive order after executive order being laid in place, transferring all the power to the centre. Your voice and your right to decide who makes decisions about how you live has all but been removed. Sure, you might get a referendum, but not before they have had five years of media to control and brainwash you into thinking that there is no other way than to hand over control to the centre. You're watching this and reading the material on our website. It's all pure fact, and our researchers have no political agenda. Use your voice. Tell others where they can find the truth at theunit.com. If we speak out, then together we can wake up this great nation and make a real difference for ourselves and our children. Speaking of brainwashing, he's back from his quest for the weapons of mass destruction. Sadly, with an empty satchel. Yes, it's TB with his pearls of informed wisdom, and I quote... If we want to exercise weight and influence in the world, why would we want to separate ourselves from the biggest political union and domestic market on our doorstep? OK, well that's cobblers. It doesn't even make sense. How could we as the nation of Britain carry any weight or influence if we were assimilated into Europe? We would simply become one tiny voice in amongst the other 27. This is nonsense, Tony. Through our amalgamation into the EU, we'd have no seat at the World Trade Organization, no seat at the United Nations, no seat at the G8, G8 or G20, so we would have no voice, no weight and no influence. I think our Mr Blair must have been out tripping on the peyote with Baroness Ashton in Peru if he hopes to make that line of thinking stick. 
Here's another corker for you. One of our accession Cheech and Chong duo, a.k.a. Bulgaria and Romania, has decided to pitch in early for a slice of Mr Draghi's freshly printed fiat currency. This article explains how Bulgarian tobacco growers are hoping to get financial assistance for their business. These people must be out at the same ranch smoking blow with Tony. The EU, which has tirelessly campaigned against smoking and the use of tobacco, is to be asked to fund not quite yet full member Bulgaria to help it revamp its tobacco industry. <laughs> this is ridiculous. No doubt, no doubt it will get full approval from the nodding dogs in the hemicircle. A little more skunk with that, Baroness? In our legislation section today, we have a report from the Committee on Economic and Monetary Affairs. This report proposes regulation and EU control over the credit ratings applied to member states and their sovereign debt. Interestingly, this is the third attempt in two years to bulldoze this legislation through. But what does it mean? OK. Government bonds provide a fixed rate of interest to the purchaser, a bond being a loan from a private individual, corporation or group to a government. Credit ratings are issued by somewhat independent credit rating agencies, Moody's and Standard & Poor. Now, I won't cover the problems with these here. The interest rate payable on the bond has a relationship with how good or bad the credit rating for a nation is. As we have seen, many nations in the EU have seen their ratings worsen, leading to higher interest rates on their bonds and thus making borrowing from the markets more difficult. Now that you're in possession of those facts, it suddenly becomes clear why the EU would want to seize control, i.e. regulate, the credit ratings, as that would give the EU total control over the bond and financial markets, enabling it to mandate over the borrowing. If you then link this control with the power of the European Stability Mechanism and the Fiscal Compact, you have a state-controlled financial market, which is a very, very bad idea indeed. Today in our video library we have episode 3 of Eric's Analysis. Dr Eric Edmund, formerly of the Bank of England, looks at the political elites and how they are bringing about fear, uncertainty and doubt into our media circles to try to persuade us of certain arguments. That's all from me at the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the E Unit, and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. And finally, our The Word program is active again. If you would like one of our public speakers to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area, get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Rick Timmis for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.